Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I made this in Blender with cloth physics and grease pencil. Like always, let's get started with the mesh. First, delete the default cube with X and Shift A to create a cube. Subdivide it with Control 2, which will create a subdivision modifier with the increment set to 2. Apply this modifier, then add another one with Control 2 without applying it to keep the geometry simpler in edit mode. Tab into edit mode. You can turn on X-ray at the top to select the hidden points and turn on proportional editing. Scroll up or down to adjust the radius. I selected some points at the bottom and scaled them out with S and down a little with SZ. After you get a nice shape, apply this modifier, Shift A to create a cube for the mouth. Scale it down and move it into place. Subdivide it with Control 1 and apply it with Command A. Now tab into edit mode and pull it into shape. Extrude out half of the mesh with E and scale it down. Then select this part with L and duplicate it with Shift D. After that, rotate this new part with RY and then type in the angle, which is 180 in this case, and then scale it down a little. Then I parented the mouth and the body, keeping them separate so it wouldn't be affected by cloth physics. So to do this, select the body and tab into edit mode, select three points and select the mouth under the outliner. Press Control P to parent. This way the mouth will follow the body when moved. Now onto the little feet. Tap back into object mode and shift A to create a cylinder. Move the cylinder down with G and scale it down with S. Then rotate it around the Y axis with RY then 90. Tab into edit mode and extrude the cylinder out. You can duplicate this claw with shift D. Then shift A to create another cylinder. Rotate it and scale it up on the x-axis. Then I created the tail by starting off with a cube, scale it up on the z-axis, and press Control R and scroll up to increase the loop cuts and move everything into shape. Then parent the tail to the body by selecting three points in edit mode and parenting it to the tail object with Control-P. To parent the feet to the log, select the feet and then shift select the log. Press Control-P to parent. Select a surface at the very top and increase the selection with command numpad plus. Or you can go to the top under select and choose Select More Less. At the side, under Vertex Group, add a new group. Change the weight to 0.9 as I don't want it to be completely pinned in place. Click Assign, and then again, expand the select with Command Numpad Plus. Then click Deselect to deselect the parts that already have weights. Change the weight to 0.7. Assign it again. Then repeat this step so that we get a more gradual effect when the legs are moved or you can simply assign a weight of 0.6 to the top, which makes this step much easier and also leads to a pretty good effect. By the way, you can also go into weight painting mode to adjust these weights manually. Then click Select under the vertex group and press Control H to create a hook object. Now do the same for the feet, select the surfaces and assign the weights, this time set to one. Again, select all the points with weights. Hold down Control while selecting the top surface to deselect these points. Then press Control H to create a hook. In object mode, right click to shade smooth. After this, let's add the cloth modifier to this guy. Under physics, click cloth. And then turn on the pressure with the values increased to four. After that, under shape, select the vertex group we just created. Here, 
If you press space to play the animation and move the hook around with G, you can see that the object is pinned at those two points. Now let's bring back all the objects made earlier. Note that your hook modifier must be above the cloth modifier for this to work. I parented the log to the hook with Control-P. Now we can animate this by moving the hook around and pressing I to key in its location, then moving to a different point in the timeline, then keying another frame. If anything weird happens when you do this, make sure that you are starting at the beginning of the timeline. If that doesn't work, then tab into edit mode, then tab back out. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to mention something quickly. If you're enjoying these tutorials and want to support me, consider joining my Patreon. As a member, you'll get access to all my Blender files and a shout out in my next video. All right, back to the tutorial. Now let's get started on the material. Let's change the viewport. Starting with the background, just change the timeline to the shader editor. Change from object to world. Just change the color of the default background to get a constant background. Changing back to object, add a new material, remove the principal BSDF with X and add a mission with shift A, and then add a light path. Adjust color. For the other objects, select the material just made and copy it. Then you can change the color to something different. Now going back to the body, select these nodes and duplicate them with Shift D, and then create a mix shader to connect them. Select the object and tab into edit mode. Select everything with A and press U to Smart UV Unwrap. Then go to Texture Paint. At the top, add a new texture. Make sure to change the color to black and press OK. This creates a new node in our material. Disconnect this node and move it to connect with the mix shader. Now, feel free to adjust this color to paint whatever you want. I changed the viewport to better see where I'm painting. You can adjust the radius and strength at the top and erase anything by holding down control. After this is finished, another layer can be added. Create a mix shader again and connect it with the output of the previous mix shader. Then duplicate the nodes again, which will be connected to the mix shader as well. Then create a new texture. Again, creating a new node, which will be connected to the newly made mix shader. Now change the color of the emission and start painting. Now, you can adjust and paint different colors by switching between the two textures. Of course, we can't forget to add a grease pencil outline. First shift A to create a camera. You can go to the camera view with numpad zero or press N to open up the side panel and lock camera to view like this. Shift A to add a grease pencil and select collection line art. This creates a grease pencil object with a line art modifier. Adjust the radius and where the line will exist under edge type. By unchecking crease, the creases made when the object gets stretched by the cloth modifier will not be outlined. And changing to individual silhouette will create an outline only on the outline edges of the object. The other lines are generated with the intersection, which creates an outline when an object intersects another object. 
To further personalize this, you can also add a dot dash modifier to break the line art into segments. I then duplicated this grease grease pencil object with shift D. Changed from collection to object and selected the main body. This creates an outline only around this object. I then added a noise modifier to this, adjusting the noise that will be applied to the position and radius. You can turn on auto keyframing to make this easier, which will create a new keyframe every time something is moved. Just press G without moving anything to key in the initial position. Move to a different position on the timeline and move the hook around. You can duplicate the keyframes with Shift D to have the object stay in the same position for some duration. You can also adjust the transition between keyframes by changing from the timeline to the graph editor and adjusting the curves in between. Uh, this can easily get out of hand, so it might help to lock, for example, the rotation and XY position, then only adjust how the object moved on the Z axis. Feel free to play around with this until you get the effect you want. Select the body and tab into edit mode. To have the bird lean down, I will be using animal. At the top, under edit, click on preference, then go to add-on to enable animal. Press N to bring up the side panel. You should see animation there. Click on that, check location, and then insert key. Then you can move the mesh around, then insert another key. This process can be slow depending on how complicated your geometry is. Now if we tab back into object mode, you should see your mesh moving. Now on to animating the expression. Shift A to create a blank grease pencil object. You can go to Material to adjust the color of the strokes. Then under Layers, uncheck Use Light so the stroke won't be affected by surrounding lighting. Now go into Draw Mode. Change to Surface at the top and adjust the offset of the drawings to the surface. Before drawing, you can also turn on Stabilize Stroke to get cleaner drawings. Now just start drawing the eyes. You can tab into Edit Mode and adjust the grease pencil around like normal mesh. To parent the drawing to the body, tab into Edit Mode. Select one of the eyes with L and press P to separate the selected ones. Going back to Object Mode, select the Body tab into Edit and select three points. Then find the eye under the Outliner. Press Ctrl P to parent. To create other frames of the animation, go back to draw mode, move to a different point in the timeline and start drawing. This creates a new keyframe, holding the new drawing. The drawing will jump from one keyframe to another. To make a smoother transition, we use an interpolate sequence. Taking one of the keyframes, I duplicated it and added the frowned eyebrows. Then duplicate this keyframe as well. Scale the eyebrow down on the first keyframe. Place the cursor in between the two keyframes and at the top under Grease Pencil, click on Interpolate Sequence. This generates a series of keyframes in between. The rest of the drawings can be made in similar ways Um, as you can see from the animation, there were some other expressions. This one, for example, is made with a different material with fill turned on. While this transition is also made with interpolate sequence with the circle tool. And then scaling it down in edit mode and using interpolation to create the transition. Now onto the little crown on its head.
Shift A to create a new grease pencil object. Add a new material and turn on fill. Then adjust the color so that it matches the material on the head. At the top, change from surface to 3D cursor and place the 3D cursor on top of the head. Now whatever you draw will be based on the position of the 3D cursor. Then parent this to the head by going into edit mode with the body selected. Choose three points under the drawing and find the drawing under the outliner like done before. Then press Ctrl P to parent. And that's pretty much it to everything. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful to you in some way. And I will see you next time.